Uh, as we get started, I just wanted to say before we start with our drama that I've seen a couple of other reformers around tonight, and I think I've seen Erwick Zwingli here. So Erwick, would you stand up so we could we could see you here? Yes, put your hat on there. Excellent, a Swiss reformer. Not sure about his views on communion, but you know. Also, we have uh, Hugh Latimer. Hugh Latimer, are you here? Where are you, Hugh? There he is, right here. Yes, English reformer, Hugh Latimer, who was burnt under uh, the reign of Bloody Mary. And um, not this Hugh Latimer, obviously, but Hugh Latimer, uh, the, Hugh Latimer, Thomas Cranmer, and Nicholas Ridley. All three were burnt at the stake uh, as they held to the truths of Scripture as they went back and they read Luther's writings. You know, if you go back and you read a lot of the men who we would hold in high regard, they became believers by reading the writings of Martin Luther, his commentaries on Galatians in particular. Uh, the gospel had been lost, or at least partially lost, and so uh, we are indebted in many ways to, to him for recovering the word of God, but also for presenting the gospel so clearly. And that's what our drama tonight is about, uh, is here I stand, the life, the life of Martin Luther, and I hope as you a watch and that you'll learn first about his life and then also that you would rejoice in uh, the gospel. That's really what, why we're here tonight. Now, before I get started, if you walk through our blacklight room, we've set the stage. Uh, you've come through the Middle Ages. And one thing you need to know about Martin Luther is he was a middle, he was from the medieval times. And uh, you can't, you have to judge men in the times that they were in. And so what we tried to paint there was a time of superstition a time of disease and death where much of Europe was being wiped out over uh, the se several hundred years due to Black Death or the bubonic plague. You never knew if you were going to live to the next day many times. And then trying to show then the church, the church had fumbled away the gospel. And there was, they were really using fear uh, for their gain. And it wasn't the gain to see men and women pointed to Christ. And so what we want to see here now is you kind of think through that. It's tonight. Wow, the gospel is glorious, and we're thankful for the word of God. And so we are going to begin now with, Here I Stand, the Life of Martin Luther. contained in them as long as I have breath in me. a lean goose, but a hundred years from now, you will hear a swan sing. My father 
was a poor miner. My mother carried wood from the forest on her back. They both worked the flesh off their bones. work would provide me with the resources I needed to become a scholar. that I was not ready to be God. I vowed at that moment to become a monk. If only God would save me. and a good career, a better one than I had a chance for, and this is how you figure you're going to honor your father and mother. You're going to become a monk. But, but Father, God is calling me. God? Lightning strikes near you, burns your skin. And you call it God? More likely, the devil! monk got to heaven by his monkery, it was I. hands. Who am I that I should lift up my eyes or raise my hands to the divine majesty? For I am dust and ashes and full of sin. And I am speaking to the living, eternal, one true God. I tortured myself with prayer, fasting, vigils, and freezing. The frost alone might have killed me. And what else did I seek by doing this but God, 
who was supposed to notice my strict observance to the monastic order and my austere life. I constantly lived in a dream, living in real idolatry. I could not believe that God would accept my works. I could not believe that Christ, I believe that Christ was a severe and terrible judge. I wearied myself greatly for almost 15 years with the daily sacrifice. I tortured myself every day with endless, rigorous works. I thought that I might acquire righteousness by my works. I felt that I was a sinner before God with an extremely disturbed conscience. I could not believe that he was appeased by my satisfaction. I did not love. Yes, I hated the righteous God who punishes sinners and secretly, if not blasphemously, certainly murmuring greatly, I was angry with God and said, as if indeed it is not enough that miserable sinners lost through original sin are crushed by every kind of calamity by the law of the Ten Commandments without having God add pain to pain by the gospel and also by the gospel threatening us with his righteousness and wrath? Thus I raged with a fierce and troubled conscience. see both priests and sinners alike indulging in their sinful pleasures with no restraint. this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from power for thine is the king thy king and the power give us and the glory forever
at last, by the mercy of God, while meditating day and night, I gave heed to the context of the words, in it the righteousness of God is revealed. As it is written, he who through faith is righteous shall live. There I began to understand that the righteousness of God is that by which the righteous live by faith live as a gift of God, namely by faith. And this is the meaning. The righteousness of God is revealed by the gospel, namely the passive righteousness, which with merciful God justifies us by faith. As it is written, he who through faith is righteous shall live. Here, I felt as if I was altogether born again and had entered paradise itself through open gates and there a totally other face of scripture opened itself up to me
Luther posted the theses only to spark a discussion amongst the priest. Luther's students found the thesis on the door and raced them to the newly developed Gutenberg printing press. Within two weeks, there was a copy in every town in Germany. Finally, what many people had thought was put down on paper for everyone to read, the blessed Roman Catholic Church was exposed. Here are a few of the 95 theses. Number five says that the Pope neither desires nor is able to remit any guilt except by declaring and showing that it has been remitted by God. And number eight, the penitential canons are imposed only on the living. And according to the canons themselves, nothing should be imposed on the dying. Number 21, thus those indulgence preachers are in error who say that a man is absolved from every penalty and saved by the papal indulgences. Oh look, number 37, any true Christian, whether living or dead, participates in all blessings of Christ in the church. And this is granted by God, even without indulgence letters. Augsburg, 1518, Luther called to defend thesis. Three days of debate. Catagen defends indulgences. Luther refuses to recant and challenges papal authority. Pope rules not by divine right, but by human agreement. Leo X excommunicates Martin Luther. 1521, Imperial Diet of Worms. Rome demands that Luther recant. In attendance, the Pope and the Emperor. Martin Luther, are you the author of these writings? These writings contain heresy against our holy church. Do you recant of these writings? Unless I am convinced by scripture and by plain reason 
and not by popes and cardinals who have so often contradicted themselves. My conscience is captive to the word of God. And to go against conscience is neither right or safe. I will not recant. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Testament into German. The people will now be able to read scripture for themselves. Later, he removes the Apocrypha. 5,000 copies sold in the first two months. Luther died in 1546 at the age of 62 in his hometown of Eisleben. We want again Luther's, Calvin's, Bunyan's, Whitfield's men fit for service. Luther's, Calvin's, Bunyan's, Whitfield's, men fit to mark eras, whose names breathe terror in our foemen's ears. We have dire need of such. Whence will they come to us? They are the gifts of Jesus Christ to the church and will come in due time. He has power to give us back again a golden age of preachers. And when the good old truth is once more preached by men, whose lips are touched as with a live coal from off the altar. This shall be the instrument in the hand of the Spirit for bringing about a great and thorough revival of religion in the land. All right, well, I'd like to have uh, all of our cast behind the screen come out so we can give them a hand. They have worked really hard, and um, all the way out here, guys, come on out.
You guys can come around here. Well, we have one last treat before we dismiss the kids downstairs. Um, let me mention before we do that for the parents and for those who want to stay in here, uh, there's a brand new docu documentary out on Martin Luther that we will be playing. Uh, the kids will be down at the carnival for probably 35, 40 minutes, and then we will bring them back up. We have some door prizes. If you filled out uh, your name, we have some great door prizes that we're going to hand out at the end. But before we dismiss them, we have a special treat. Um, it's the Reformation Polka. And uh, we uh, are looking forward to hearing this. So you need to listen to the words because it tells you about Martin Luther as well and his life. And I think you'll enjoy uh, this next song. So you might have seen this on Lawrence Welk uh, many years ago. So. Martin Luther was a man of great religious conviction, a man who loved the Lord, and also a man of hearty humor. Uh, and so some of this uh, should come through, I think, in the polka. He didn't write it, of course, but uh, it's all about his life. So what we want you to do is we're going to start. I, I don't think you'll have too much trouble picking up the tune. It goes to supercalifragilistic expialidocious. So I think you'll be able to get there. And uh, so we'd love you to sing it with us, if you would, as you begin to catch on. Again, it shouldn't take you too long. The words are there. Uh, and really, this is a review of the Reformation, of Martin Luther's part in the Reformation. So, here we go. When I was a younger man, I studied canon law. Though Eifert was a challenge, it was just to please my pa. Then came the storm, the lightning struck, I called upon Saint Anne. I shaved my head, I took my vows, an Augustinian. Oh, papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Speak your mind against them and face excommunication. Nail your theses to the door, let's start a reformation. Papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. When Tetzel came near Wittenberg, St. Peter's prophet soared. So I wrote a little message for the All Saints Bulletin Board. You cannot purchase merit, for we're justified by grace. Here's 95 more theses, brother Tetzel, in your face. Join us now. Papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Speak your mind against them and face our immunity. Nail your theses to the door, let's start a reformation. Papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. They loved my tracks, adored my wit, all were exemplar. -or. The Pope, however, hauled me up before the Emperor. Are these your books? Will you recant? King Charles did demand. I will not change my diet, sir. God help me here. I say, here you now. Oh, papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Speak your mind against them and face excommunication. Nail your theses to the door. Let's start a reformation. Papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Do 
Duke Frederick took the wise approach, responding to my words. Can't hear you now. By knighting George a hostage in the kingdom of the birds. Use Brother Martin's model as the languages you seek. Stay locked inside the castle with your Hebrew and your Greek. Oh, big bubbles, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Speak your mind against them and face excommunication. Nail your theses to the door, let's start a reformation. Big bubbles, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Raise our steins and concord books together in this place And spread the word that Catholic is spelled with lowercase The word remains unfettered when the spirit gets a chance So come on Katie, drop your loot and join us in the... Everybody now! Papables, indulgences and transubstantiation Speak your mind against them and face excommunication your theses to the door. Let's start a reformation. Here we go. Papal bulls, indulgences, and transubstantiation. Uh, outstanding. We're going to do that one.